Back in the Netherlands in the 1630s, tulips were brand new and considered pretty sweet, so traders began buying them in order to sell them on later for a large profit. As more and more people saw this as an opportunity to make Scrooge McDuck levels of money, the price of tulips skyrocketed beyond all reasonable valuation. As people started to speculate on future tulips, assuming that their price would only keep going up. At the height of what was later called tulip mania, a single bulb cost more than a large house. Which is insane. It all came crashing down when, at an auction, these outrageously priced tulips ended up selling for far less than the asking price. Speculators feared that the bubble had burst and rushed to sell their tulips before they lost even more value. Which caused the price to crash through the floor and many people to lose Scrooge McDuck levels of money. A pattern which has repeated itself throughout history a number of times that can only be described as deeply depressing. The idea of buying and selling a flower bulb for the cost of a large mansion is absurd, right? Well, how about a gif of a pixelated cat with a pop-tart for a torso selling for over half a million dollars? The reason I'm talking about tulips is because it makes for a fitting segue into the actual topic of this video, NFTs. We have such sights to show you. Welcome everyone. Do you want to learn how to gain access to Floyd's world? It's easy. Just follow me. NFTs equals identity 2.0. Can't remember the last time I used my pick on the left. Bruh, this is so dumb. People are stealing my punk that I paid 225k for and using it as a profile page. How is this legal? The love of my life may actually be thinking about divorcing me because she cannot understand the business of the future. I tried to explain it to her. It's not just an image, it's an investment! NFT phobia is one of the single biggest problems on this website, without a f***ing doubt. Join me and try to hashtag stop NFT phobia. They're buddies. <laughs> the Bitcoins have set me free, Chucky. This NFT going to get me pussy. Mental maturity should be more than enough. I don't know what NFT stands for. I'm assuming it's looking out not tonight. Is that? What? <laughs> Hell is only a word. The reality is much, much worse. This video is sponsored by that thing you've absolutely never heard of, ever. <laughs> but in all seriousness, Raycon's wireless everyday earbuds are back. And they look, sound, and feel better than ever. And probably taste better too. N not that I checked. These bad boys can last for up to 8 hours of playtime, have a 32 hour battery life, and optimise gel earbuds for a perfect in-ear fit. So, I spent a few months in America, and while I was there, food happened. So I got fat. So I decided to take up running again, in order to not look like Big Chungus. And every time I've taken these earbuds out on a run, not once have they ever fallen out. That's how good they fit. Also, they're sweat and water resistant, so that's pretty good too. So these Raycons were a good idea. The running, though, was definitely not. Oh my god. What makes them more convenient is their touch controls, with which you can adjust the volume, play, pause, skip, ignore that call from the tax man, and much more. It also features three customizable sound profiles, so I can get the best sound out of whatever I'm listening to. And not only do they block out background noise, but they also feature an awareness mode, in case I still need to hear what's going on around me so I don't accidentally run into somebody's poodle? Cause that kinda happened once? With great quality sound at half the price of other premium audio brands, you'll be left with more money to waste on those hobbies you can't tell your mum about. DISGUSTING! So click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash cynical reviews to get 15% off your Raycon order. And you know, you'll be helping to support the channel. Yeah, that's... that's kind of cool too. So do it, or I'll do your mum. Big thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members for helping me make videos. More information on how you can support and the benefits of doing so at the end. Also join the Discord, it's fun. <sighs> 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 
Let's do this. Oh yes, boys, it's finally time to talk about NFTs and those god-awful NFT cartoons. I've wanted to talk about this for quite a while, and I know that I'm very late to this topic. I was playing Elden Ring, and that's like getting sucked into an endless abyss of time. Oh, what? 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 Oh! But the good thing about taking so long to make this is that I got to see how things played out, and I can now speak with the benefit of more hindsight. And I was also able to find more juicy, juicy stuff to talk about. So trust me when I say that this video is going to be exceptionally moist. Speaking of moist, the UK is currently experiencing a massive heat wave. Global warming, yeah! So if it looks like I'm sweating my bollocks off, it's because I am. Unfortunately for all of us, the rise of NFTs coincided with the global pandemic, when most of us were stuck in our homes and the internet was our only relief from fatal boredom. And NFTs started popping up everywhere, even being promoted by Jimmy Fallon and Paris Hilton, in what is some of the worst celebrity acting and most unsubtle product promotion I've ever seen. And I was like, I want something that like kind of reminds me of me, but I, I, this one, it's, it does. This is my ape. Yeah. It reminded me of me a little bit because I wear striped shirts. Mm -hmm. I've worn these heart sunglasses because my daughters, <laughs> just as a joke, they have them and I, as a joke, I put them on. So I've done this. <laughs> and I love Yacht Rock and being breezy. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that kind of, and I like the blue. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, whoever's holding you hostage, just let them release that golden shower video, okay? This isn't worth it. So there's no way you haven't heard of NFTs. But what even are they? NFTs, the blockchain, cryptocurrency, all this stuff is pretty weird and complicated. And unfortunately, a lot of it sounds kind of like this. Moreover, whenever a fluorescent score motion is required, it may also be employed in conjunction with a drawn reciprocation dingle arm to reduce sinusoidal replenition. It would take multiple feature-length videos to discuss everything in detail. So I'd encourage you guys to spread the algorithmic love and check out some of these other great videos to learn more about these topics. My video isn't intended to replace them by any means, these are just my thoughts on the situation. Also, while NFTs and cryptocurrency are extremely intertwined, in the interest of keeping things simple, I'm going to be focusing purely on NFTs as much as possible. Okay, it's time to put on the serious hat. What? Well, this is my serious hat. Deal with it. So what is an NFT? Unfortunately, it doesn't stand for nice flapping thighs or the big fucking... Uh, to gun. NFT stands for non-fungible token. An NFT is a unique bit of data made up of a random string of numbers and letters. That data is the token, and that token is stored on a blockchain. Very simply, you can think of a blockchain like a publicly accessible online ledger that records transactions. Those transactions being verified by millions of computers constantly making small calculations. And once something has been added to a blockchain, everyone can see it and it can't be altered or removed. That's a big oversimplification, but it's enough for us to work with. Fungible means able to be copied. And NFTs are non-fungible in the sense that that string of data, the token, cannot be replicated. Because its uniqueness is verified and enforced by the blockchain. Are you with me so far? Okay, just check in because this confused the hell out of me as well. Most NFTs function as URLs or hyperlinks to something else that has to be stored somewhere outside the blockchain. The program on the blockchain that determines who owns the token and what it links to is called a smart contract. NFTs could in theory be linked to anything digital. An NBA highlight video, an exclusive concert ticket, or a virus that directs all your internet traffic to Blue Waffle. Okay, once we start joking about Blue Waffle, I think the serious hack can come off. Yeet! I joke, but that last point about malware, it actually happens. Yo, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake, this is fake. They popped up in my wallet, I clicked on it to delete it, immediately they stole 19 grand. When I say NFT, most of you will automatically think of images like this. Even if you don't know what an NFT is, you can't have missed these. They have been popping up everywhere like weeds. They're arguably the most prominent and infamous examples of NFTs, and I'm going to be using them as my main example in what follows, because they have almost all the problems I'm going to discuss. Nah, there's got to be a way of turning pictures into profit. Huh? Huh? 
Hey, I just stepped into my best idea yet. Oh, and by the way, you're going to be hearing the word NFT a lot in this video. <laughs> There's really nothing I can do about that. But if you've given up on life, try taking a drink every time I say NFT, and you'll achieve that state of blissful unconsciousness in no time. Nobody seems to like NFTs. We didn't find anybody who actually had anything positive to say about them. That doesn't mean they're not here, but it just goes to show what a crazy minority people who like these things are. Since their rise to prominence, NFTs have seen an enormous amount of hatred online. To the point where artists have created websites dedicated to mocking them, and whenever a large company or celebrity says they're getting into NFTs, it goes down about as well as a K-pop concert in North Korea. And some companies are even using the NFT backlash to appeal to their fellow kids. With... mixed results. And whenever something bad happens involving NFTs, like them being lost in a hack or someone accidentally selling their $1 million drawing of a rock for one cent, the reaction is almost universally one of derision and schadenfreude, to the extent that it even became a meme. And then the subject of that meme also got turned into an NFT, which... Okay, that's... that's pretty funny. Death threats and other nonsense like that aside, based on all my research, I do feel that a lot of this negativity is justified. Look bro, NFTs are great, they're gonna change everything bro, you just don't get it. Of course you'd support NFTs in large colon plushie, you're full of shit. Now it would be incorrect and a bit unfair to say that all NFTs are bad and all NFT schemes are a scam. There are definitely some projects out there that are way more promising than others. Nerd City's Dead Avatars project, or Jomatex Vax Doggos, for example. And maybe in future we'll see more projects with some merit. But with these few exceptions aside, in the environment that we've been seeing for the past few years, the vast majority of them are bad. And so for the sake of simplicity, I don't feel bad making a general statement. The most outspoken and obnoxious supporters of NFTs are known derisively as NFT bros. And NFT bros will tell you that NFTs are the best thing since sliced Jesus and that you're an idiot for not jumping on the hype train. Stands for non-fungible tokens. It's the biggest technology that's ever happened in the history of life outside of things like fucking fire and like the printing press is the one that I keep going back to. Television, phone, fine, but this is like printing press 10.0. Yeah. Right, okay mate, calm down. With all due respect, I disagree. NFT bros will call this FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Well, call me a FUD packer because I'm going to be packing some serious FUD all over your face. And so like when you think about the concept of digital scarcity and things that are, you know, they can't be copied. That are easily reproduced. <laughs> well, but they're not the same, right? It's not. Firstly, what makes NFTs worth anything is their supposed non fungibility. Their value is based on the whole idea of scarcity. When something is unique or part of a unique and limited collection, a much higher value can be assigned to it. And NFTs are an attempt to create artificial digital scarcity. Personally, I think the very idea of digital scarcity runs counter to the ideal of a free and open internet that benefits us all, but that's a whole nother dissertation in itself. But that scarcity only applies to the token, the unique string of numbers and letters, which indeed cannot be copied. But it doesn't apply to most things that the token is linked to, which as it turns out, are very much fungible. Hence the rise of the, in my opinion, hilarious right click save meme. If I copy your NFT profile pic of a mutated ape covered in Cthulhu's jizz, sure, I might not own that original token. But the only difference between what I now have and what you have is that intangible concept of digital ownership. And I'm enjoying that without having to sell my kidney for it. And the amounts that people are paying for that concept of digital ownership are actually ridiculous, far outstripping any tangible value these NFTs could have. Which might explain why NFT bros get so butthurt about people screenshotting their JPEGs. Although I guess if you'd spent $171,000 on a profile pic, you get weirdly attached to it too. Oh hey, I right click saved it in real life. That's just how I roll. And just to confuse things even further, there's no way to stop somebody from buying a different token and then linking it to an image that's identical to the one that you own. Or even to the exact same image on the page that it's hosted. So while the token may not be replicable, the thing that makes that token worth anything often is. The common joke going around the internet is that it's kind of like being married, but everyone else gets to fuck your wife. 
When even the minions can dunk on you for this and it goes down well, I'd have a long hard think about your life. But NFT bros will call this a right clicker mentality and insist that we just don't get it. Because no matter what we do, we'll never truly own the image, so they win. You need to stop screenshotting NFTs. Screenshotting NFTs is not the same thing as actually owning it. You can't actually sell an NFT if it's just a screenshot. So no matter how many times you screenshot an NFT, you still can't sell it. The only way you can sell it is if you own it on the blockchain. So let's talk about that ownership, shall we? When you buy an NFT, what do you actually own? Well, not a lot, really. This is why you can't screenshot NFTs. NFTs are essentially digital art. If you don't own the art, you can't use it. If you went and took a picture of the Mona Lisa, you couldn't sell it, but you can sell the Mona Lisa. If you somehow purchased the Mona Lisa, you'd own the real original Mona Lisa that Da Vinci painted. But due to how the nature of sharing digital files works, even if you buy an NFT of an image, you still don't own the original image that the artist created. Even if I took the MP4 of this video as soon as it had finished rendering and minted it into an NFT, what you'd then purchase is still not the original video. The original is still on my hard drive, and the only way to own it would be to buy my PC. In fact, it's actually worse than that. Remember, the NFT is not the image. It's the token. And the token is just a certificate or a receipt that says that you own the thing that the token is linked to. Basically, what you're actually buying is the right to say, I own this thing. And I think even a lot of people who buy NFTs don't realise or understand this important point. They think that they're buying the image and all the rights to it, when in most cases, they're not. And right now, that ownership is very legally dubious. And the idea that minting something as an NFT means that you own it is so shaky that it's laughable. For example, YouTubers have had their channels minted as NFTs against their will. But if you buy this NFT, you don't own Sabersparks channel. You could mint this video as an NFT and you still wouldn't own anything. It's like those websites where you can buy and name a star. Legally, it's meaningless and nonsensical. And since anyone can mint an NFT and an NFT could be anything, this leads to some pretty ridiculous results. Like selling NFTs of colours. Are you fucking kidding me? You just, you bought an NFT from a fucking vending machine? Blue! You bought the color blue! What the fuck? It's a good thing that these claims of ownership would get laughed out of court because NFT bros have even talked about claiming ownership of colors, at least in specific contexts. Imagine how shitty the consequences would be if you could actually enforce claims like that. And when it comes to copyright and what rights you receive along with your purchase of an NFT, that's very much up to the terms of the smart contract. In very few cases do you actually receive the copyright to the asset. And even when you are given a license to use it however you wish, like for example as a character in a TV show, the original seller still retains the intellectual property. So check that fine print, you might be shocked. NFTs are also claimed to be permanent, which is true if we're talking about the token on the blockchain, which will stick around as long as the blockchain itself does. But the asset that the NFT links to needs to be hosted elsewhere. And if the owner of the website or game or whatever it is that hosts the asset changes the link to page or the asset itself, then you've lost the thing that you were supposed to own. And if the website shuts down, then you're left with a broken link. You're shit out of luck, son, and all your apes are gone. There are attempts to get around this vulnerability by using peer-to-peer -peer sharing systems so the asset isn't stored in just one place, but as the large numbers of dead torrents attest to, that's still not a guarantee in the long term. NFTs are also touted as a way to help artists assert their intellectual property rights over their digital art and to make more money from their craft. I'm not going to deny that some artists have done well off NFTs, and perhaps in future this technology might be in a better place to help all artists get their dues. But the reality is that most artists who try to make money off NFTs will actually lose money because of the fees involved in minting them. And because the NFT marketplace is completely unregulated and moderation is poor, art theft is utterly rampant. With many artists having their work stolen, often by bots scraping up everything they can, and sold as NFTs without their knowledge, permission or benefit. It's so common that there are entire Twitter accounts dedicated to cataloguing NFT art theft and fraud. And the popular art community DeviantArt had to implement an AI to spot stolen art being sold as NFTs. 
Artists have almost no recourse if their art gets stolen and sold, and NFT bros will say something like, well, well you should have just minted your art first, which really says a lot about their moral character. And going back to what we were talking about earlier, because anyone can create an NFT and an NFT could be almost anything, you still need some external mechanism outside of NFTs and the blockchain to verify ownership, which makes those things, legally speaking, useless and redundant. But the truth is that in the majority of NFT art projects and purchases, it isn't about the art. It's about money. Many art NFTs are the product of AIs pumping out virtually identical low-effort images based on variables they've been fed, in order to quickly get out large batches of this super cool artwork to sell to speculators with no taste or good sense. Which is why most of these art NFTs look uninspired, derivative, ugly, boring, and barely unique at all. Wait, wait, there's lots of other characters if you don't like the pixie sorcerer. No, there aren't. They're all just the same with different costumes. Even the most prominent collections, like the Bored Apes and Lazy Lions, are far from the worst in this regard. Hell, look at the Mr. Bean NFTs. It looks like they just screenshotted the show and are trying to sell these like they're unique frames of animation. Look how fucking lazy this is. Impeccable timing on their part, by the way. At least it isn't as bad as Madonna's weird NFT project that depicts plants and insects coming out of her vagina. Yes, that's real, and I do regret knowing that it exists. Research at your own caution. It will not be your proudest fap. The fact that much of this artwork is so ugly and lazy has only further added to the online ridicule. Because if you're going to remortgage your house to buy a JPEG, it should at least be something you can whip out at a family reunion without disappointing your grandma. And again, all that expense is for something that's not tangible. At least with tulips, or beanie babies, or anything else that you could speculate on for insane prices, you had something. With a tulip, you could maybe give it to a date, and maybe get laid? Try telling that girl you like about the monkey JPEG you just spent your college fund on. I'm sure she'll be very impressed. Now, of course, NFTs aren't just images. Some can provide tangible benefits that are included when you pay for it. Like backstage passes for a concert, access to exclusive content from creators, entry to private areas on MMORPGs, and so on. But these could be provided by other devices that don't have the drawbacks of NFTs. And I couldn't find any benefits of NFTs that also couldn't be provided thus. There's simply no reason for these things to be NFTs or on a blockchain. Except for the hype and the buzzwords. And some of the claims that are being made about the supposed potential benefits of NFTs are just ridiculous. If you make an NFT of a real diamond, and the diamond itself gets destroyed in a fire tomorrow, you still have the same asset. Because the token still exists and is in limited supply, just as before, nothing has changed. What NFT is doing to the concept of asset, few understand. Fucking... someone's cutting their hedge outside. It's difficult to know whether those who push NFTs so hard are so deluded that they genuinely believe the absurd claims that are being made about NFTs, or whether they're just charlatans trying to sell you the Emperor's new clothes. But neither of those is a good look. Wow, NFTs can really save the rainforest and protect indigenous rights? Yeah, how about no? NFTs do not solve the problems they claim to solve, some of which they invented themselves, and in fact create more problems of their own. Minting NFTs, generating the cryptocurrencies necessary to buy and sell them, and recording transactions to a blockchain requires a lot of energy. Not all NFTs are equally wasteful, of course. But to give you an example, one analyst estimated that the average NFT consumed more electricity than an EU resident would use in over a month. And in March 2022, every single transaction on the Ethereum blockchain, the most popular for NFTs, used up more electricity than the average US household would use in nine days. NFTs are extremely energy inefficient, and the massive boom in demand for NFTs has not only helped drive up energy bills for the rest of us, but it also generates more carbon emissions and other forms of environmental waste. Perhaps NFTs can be made more sustainable as the technology evolves, but right now, we're far from that point. And it's a problem that needs to be addressed before Pingu and Happy Feet end up homeless. By this point, I hope you understand why negative reactions to NFTs have been so strong and passionate. But if you want a concrete example of why NFTs are both pointless and a net negative, we can look at the attempts to introduce them into video games. 
I'd recommend watching these two videos by Christopher Natsumi, an experienced video game developer, for a more detailed insight on the issue of NFTs in gaming. I'll just give you the cliff notes. Every example of NFTs in gaming that I have come across has provided no tangible benefits for gamers themselves that couldn't be provided through normal means like DLC. And in many cases, these in-game NFTs are just stuff you would find in the game normally, but publishers just want to squeeze more money out of. Do you guys remember when you could just buy a game and unlock everything in that game just by playing it? Oh yeah. I remember. And if the game shuts down, as has happened, your NFT becomes utterly worthless, or you lose it entirely. Pour one out for the unfortunate soul who bought 2019's most expensive NFT specifically for this game. And the idea that buying an NFT of an item in a video game, like a gun or a dildo helmet, will allow you to take that item into another video game is both unworkable and delusional. There's no reason to introduce NFTs into gaming except naked greed and the desire to monetize every aspect of our activities unnecessarily. They're a natural extension and escalation of the predatory microtransactions and gambling mechanics that have already been ruining the gaming industry. Which is why games involving NFTs are banned on Steam, and why every time a game company tries to implement them, they're met with massive backlash. Oh, if only there were some way for them to know how unpopular NFTs were before they tried to implement them! And that's not even talking about games designed specifically around NFTs, like Axie Infinity, which involves a play-to-earn system that comes straight out of a Black Mirror dystopian nightmare. With NFT landlords exploiting the desperation of impoverished third world workers who rent NFTs from them and then sit at their screens all day grinding away to earn a few e-bucks while creating nothing of value. Oh, and there's also talk of a Web 3.0 games console which will feature a marketplace where you can buy and trade NFTs and even a wallet button on your fucking controller. Yeah, good luck with that one. At least the Ouya, humiliating failure that it was, actually shipped a physical product. Whereas this is just a fucking scam. The boom in NFTs, like Tulip Mania and Beanie Babies, is driven by speculation. While some people just want to collect them because they think they're neat, most people are buying them in order to hopefully sell them later for a higher price. Because the tokens are unique and non-replicable, people assume that they can only ever increase in value. With a lot of people rushing into the NFT market after a number of high-profile sales that were widely covered in the media, which was the entire point of those enormous prices, to further drive up demand. And this hype and speculation is why NFTs demand prices that are astronomically higher than what they're actually worth, and why so many ridiculous things are being sold as NFTs. If I minted an NFT of my cock and balls, I'm sure somebody would buy it. I joke, but it's been done before. Despite there being billions of dollars in the NFT market, the number of NFT owners is comparatively pretty small, and most NFTs are concentrated in the hands of a few whales. The vast majority of NFTs sell for small amounts, if they even sell at all. And most people who try to get into NFTs will end up losing money on them because of the fees involved in minting them. It's the early adopters and the big investors that are walking away with a paycheck thicker than your mother. Much like with tulips, or subprime mortgage bonds, or many other examples you can find throughout history, it's a massive bubble. With people trying to make as much money as they can from this newfangled thing before the bubble inevitably bursts as indeed it already has. And since the pursuit of money above all else is the entire point, NFTs have both motivated and enabled a mind-boggling amount of scummy behaviour. I genuinely could not believe the amount I found while I was researching. It makes Gordon Gecko look like Ned Flanders. With even dead artists having their work stolen and sold, beloved celebrities having their corpses desecrated to promote and sell NFTs, and even victims of fatal police brutality being exploited for money. And it looks like Godwin's law even applies to NFTs. Now look, I get it. Regulators and the politicians who enable them have a tendency of sucking major balls. But the complete lack of oversight has turned the NFT marketplace into a wild west, in all the wrong ways. Because the market is completely unregulated and NFT market sites are poorly moderated, as well as the fact that most users are almost completely anonymous and consequences are virtually non-existent, theft and fraud are absolutely rampant. Wash trading, which is when you sell something to yourself using sock puppets in order to artificially boost up the price and therefore the demand from third parties, is also very common, and probably responsible for a lot of the absurd valuations. And since it's very difficult for governments to regulate or tax NFTs, they become a new and convenient way to launder money and dodge taxes. 
especially after it became much more difficult to do so through the previously favoured method, art trading. Rug pull scams, which is when you get a bunch of people to give you money based on false promises and then pull out and leave them with nothing, are also extremely common. Here are just a few of the NFT rug pulls I found while researching this video. The creators of the promised NFT game Battle Cats Arena nuked the project and ran off with $55,000. The creators of God Z Ape, a ripoff of the more popular Bored Apes, ran off with $68,000. The creators of Real Swack NFTs ran off with roughly $580,000. The creators of an unofficial Minecraft NFT game called Blockverse disappeared along with over $1 million. The developers of the Frosties NFT project ran off with $1.3 million. The creators of the Big Daddy Ape Club NFTs took $1.3 million from their investors. The creators of the NFT fighting game Evolved Apes abandoned the project and ran off with around $2.7 million. And the list goes on. NFT wallets and projects also get hacked and stolen from so frequently that it's almost not funny. And if you post about losing your NFTs to a hack, a bunch of bots will show up claiming to be able to help. Which is probably another scam, just to rub salt into the wound. And in order to avoid all these problems, NFT marketplaces would have to be centralised and regulated, which is the exact opposite of what NFT bros want. Because the blockchain revolution is all about decentralisation and deregulation. The impression I get is that the market is flooded with people who just want to make as much money as possible before the bubble bursts and the regulators come smashing in the door. Now obviously not everyone who trades NFTs is a bad person and trading NFTs doesn't inherently make you a piece of shit. But scammers and criminals love NFTs. Convicted scammer Anna Sorokin, who conned people out of hundreds of thousands of dollars by pretending to be a German heiress, said that she wants to abandon her scammer persona and get into NFTs. <laughs> I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. When even a company renowned for their terrible service and disregard for their customer's dignity is able to take the moral high ground over you, you might want to reconsider your position. It might not seem like it, but I did honestly try to keep an open mind and be fair while researching this topic. But everything I found just screamed scam. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Because remember, NFTs have no inherent value aside from what someone else is willing to pay for them. In a trivial sense, that's true of anything, but unlike other things, most NFTs have nothing further to justify their monetary value beyond the concept of ownership. And even that is shaky at best. NFTs are the digital equivalent of snake oil. But at least with snake oil, you get to keep the bottle that it comes in. And the oil. But saying that something is rare or scarce or will have more value in future is the only way you're going to sell someone a big box of nothing. These NFTs operate like a bigger fool scheme, where the whole point is to sell them onto someone that you can dupe into thinking that they're worth more than what you paid for them in an infinite chain of bigger idiots. The problem with this, of course, is that eventually you're going to run out of idiots. In that sense, they're similar to a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme, which is where you have to recruit more people in order to make any money, and out of all the investors, some get their money back and act as social proof to the others, while most people who buy in either don't make money or actively lose it. If you're an early adopter, sure, there's money to be made. But if you're not, you'll be the one left holding the worthless bag of shit when the music stops. Everyone wants to be the pump, and no one wants to be the dump. So NFT bros need to appeal to gullible people who want easy money, and are thus easy targets for these kind of schemes. And that's why NFTs need to be hyped up, because doing so keeps the gravy train rolling. It's why NFT projects are willing to spend large amounts of money to display ads in Times Square. It's why you'll find bots spamming everywhere to promote NFTs. And it's why celebrities are being encouraged to get into NFTs, and sometimes even just given them for free to promote them. Because when you've got ringing endorsements from such credible celebrities as talentless nobody Paris Hilton and vagina steaming pseudoscience pushing Gwyneth Paltrow, you know you're onto a quality product. They might even hire celebrity impersonators to get people hyped up for their NFT convention or stage fake protests outside their convention to make NFTs look cool somehow. By whatever means, NFT bros have to hype the absolute shit out of NFTs because they have to convince someone that they're worth something in order to make good on their investment. And also because maybe they need that psychological self and mutual validation that comes from being in an exclusive club, however cringy. And these clubs are very important when it comes to understanding NFT culture. 
Because these NFTs are fundamentally worth jack shit, in order to make money on them, their creators have to convince people that they're the hottest new thing that you don't want to miss out on. Which is why they make it about being part of a community that is so exclusive, exciting, glamorous, supportive, and lucrative that it justifies the price of entry. But if you want to buy your way into one of these exclusive clubs, let's say the biggest and most high profile, the Bored Ape Yacht Club, the cheapest Bored Ape NFT on sale on OpenSea right now costs $130,000. Better stop buying avocados and Netflix, you fucking millennials. This need for hype has created an almost cult-like mentality among many of these NFT bro groups, where toxic positivity is encouraged and criticism is dismissed. Again, the comparison to multi-level marketing schemes is pretty apt, and this mentality has led to many well-documented examples of cringe. There are so many of these that I couldn't possibly mention them all. I'm educating women right now about NFTs, and I'm hearing these women say, my brain haven't worked like this in weeks, months, and years. A natural, genuine smile came across my face. I'm thankful. Like, imagine going to a convention to meet fellow NFT enthusiasts and bond over your ridiculously expensive JPEGs just to get called a virgin by Amy Schumer. I don't know what NFT stands for. I'm assuming it's looking out not f***ing tonight. Is that, is that correct? Do I have that right? On that note, do you guys want to see something good? And by good, I mean not good in any way. This NFT is changing the game. Meta Girlfriends allows you to have a Metaverse girlfriend with their own unique personality. They already sold out of their pre-sale 1000 NFTs, so the hype is real. They're introducing a brand new feature where you can combine multiple NFTs into a more rare one in something called the Rainbow Room. They're mincing tomorrow at 3pm Eastern, so check it out. Can't get a girlfriend in real life? Well, just buy one on the blockchain, you fucking loser! In technology, great. Meta Girlfriends represent the mature side of NFT art. They are randomly generated using over 600 traits across 20 categories to guarantee each one comes with a unique personality. Unlike real women, am I right? Meta Girlfriends are fully clothed and visible from the waist up in public. Nice spelling job there. Having a Meta Girlfriend in your wallet is your key to the members only area where you'll gain access to view her full body and private not safe for work content. Yes, you are really paying to see a mass produced cartoon woman's titties. I'll give you a hint, all those titties look the same. And Google is free! This is sadder than an anime body pillow, because at least with a body pillow, you can actually fuck it. Anyway, the point is that when you buy one of these art NFTs, it isn't really about the art, because the art is crap. It's really about you buying into a community and an ongoing project in the hope that it will eventually make every member of that group rich. Just believe, invest, spread the word, and don't tolerate any FUD, and we're all gonna make it. Except for the vast majority who won't, because most NFT projects have lost value and most NFTs are worthless, but we won't tell them that because then we won't make any money. And if you just believe in NFTs, then I believe in NFTs, and then they believe in NFTs, and we make all kinds of fucking money! It's been a long journey so far, and we've already been through a lot together. But now, it's finally time to talk about the NFT cartoons. They're kind of like crowdfunded animation series is where buying an NFT gets you benefits, like exclusive access to behind the scenes content, or having a say in the story. It depends on the project. But they really exist to generate hype and attention to their associated projects, to fulfil part of a roadmap of an ongoing project, to inspire its existing members, and encourage more to join. They are, essentially, propaganda to get you to buy NFTs. But this propaganda is more shameless than those old cartoons that existed purely to sell you toys. And they are of far, far worse quality. Now you're all set. Just come back to FloydNFC.com and buy your way into Floyd's world. We are preparing something unique for you. See you soon. Well, that was fucking dreadful. If the clips I've already shown you haven't made you want to stab your eyes out by now, you're a stronger person than me. It's also important to point out that backers will often be promised a portion of streaming revenue and other forms of monetary returns for buying into a project. But you're only going to get a return on your investment if the product is something of quality, right? Well, in this regard, these animations are a spectacular fail. If I'd invested in one of these, I would be pissed. Ah! 
On the extreme end of the spectrum, some of these animations are locked behind an exclusive paywall. One example being Stoner Cats, starring Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher. With these animations, you have to buy and own one of the limited supply of NFTs in order to view them, so fuck that. I really don't like the idea of art being produced that can only ever be experienced by a very small number of people who pay an extortionate amount of money for that privilege. I think this model of NFT content creation based on needless artificial scarcity does nothing for either art nor culture, cannot possibly have any kind of lasting cultural impact, and only serves to benefit the short-term financial interest of the creators themselves. Furthermore, these animations are an example of how NFTs are affecting the funding and creation of media through what is being called decentralized content creation. One idea I'm really excited about is what we call decentralized content creation, de decentralized storytelling. So the idea that you'd have a the next Disney or Marvel would come instead of from top down from a from a company would come from an internet community who comes together and using NFTs and tokens and other kinds of Web3 concepts can create stories and characters and actually own parts of those characters and have control over them. And so, you know, they, instead of having to sit there on the sidelines and debate what should be canon on the next Star Wars, they can actually decide that as a community. Art is not a democracy, with creative decisions being made by the people that consume it. And as soon as it becomes like that, it dies. And the idea that a bunch of random NFT bros could create the next Marvel or Disney is... <laughs> That's nothing short of delusional. The fact that these animations, with few exceptions, are some of the most embarrassing things I've ever had to look at on this channel leaves me fully confident in that statement. Thank God they're as short as they are, because they are so, so hard to watch. Such as Super Doge, which exists to get you to buy Super Doge NFTs. Why does this look like a ripoff of the Subway logo? They boast about having an award-winning team, including an Emmy-nominated writer and animators who've worked on stuff like X-Men and Gargoyles. So it's gotta be good. Right? Okay, Catter. You got my bone. But it's no good without me. I am its secret seed. What? Oh, I should probably put in an epilepsy warning here, because the people that animated this show had absolutely no chill. Or they just really hated epileptics. So if you do have any issues with that, I'll leave a timestamp on the screen so you can skip ahead. This is like one of those parody trailers you'd see playing in the background in GTA. Let's take a look at the only episode they've released so far, Don't Tokenize Me Bro. But I thought tokenizing was the whole point, though? This was a two-parter that they uploaded to YouTube a while back, but have since removed, hopefully out of shame. Yo, Dogepack, we have a situation, man. Is that fucking Rafiki with a Bitcoin staff? What's an NFT? Notorious felon terrorist? So an NFT is a unique token stamped forever in the blockchain that can't be duplicated. This means non-fungible. Uh, like these. You couldn't be more unsubtle if you tried. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? They're trying to make it seem like a Saturday morning cartoon, but then they say curse words and make a bunch of sex jokes. Face it, Super Doge. Your puny little bone is no match for me. I'm a grower, not a shower. Okay, Catter. So I really don't know who the target audience for this show is supposed to be, aside from people with poor taste. The animation is awful and inconsistent both between the two parts and even within the same part. The lip syncing is also so-so at best, the jokes sound like they were written by Amy Schumer, and the voice acting is not only terrible, but actually gets worse in the second part. Got it wrong, fat cat. Game over. You don't know, but I got a bone. Pick with you. And some of it sounds like it was recorded over Discord. <laughs> Your girlfriend is nothing but a cash cow now. Just more milk for the kitties. The writing also makes no sense. Like, Super Doge doesn't know what an NFT is, but they get their powers from the blockchain? Team, let's chain up! Oh, behave. <laughs> yeah. And they've got this villain called Fat Cat, who's turning people into NFTs so that he can sell them. But it's the NFT bros that are doing the scummy shit, though? Wait, I'm confused. 
Fiat cats deal in fiat cash monies. Why he is minting people into NFTs? Because genius, you can sell an NFT and that's all they care about. These cats are too greedy. They must be stopped. It's like they're saying, hey, you see those awful people? They're not really into NFTs, they're scammers. We're not scammers, you should buy our NFTs, because we're definitely not scammers. Right guys? So the Doge packs show up, the Eastern European one who looks like Bartok if he joined the Russian Mafia gets turned into an NFT, the furry bait girl gets turned into a literal cash cow, and everything seems fucked. But then Stoner Rafiki shows up and does... something? They don't even show it, and then apparently all is good? I think he mints a bunch of identical super doges, which misses the point that NFTs are meant to be unique. I think that's what's going on? I, I can't even tell with this nonsense. Fat Cat turns into a kaiju, but instead of using this newfound power to crush Super Doge, he just fucks off? Did they run out of money or something? A no boner army shall stop me. <laughs> That's funny, man. You just said you have a boner army. Just saying boner isn't funny, and having him point it out also isn't funny. Oh, and I thought that once something was minted into an NFT that it couldn't be undone. I thought that was the whole point of the blockchain. So them being freed at the end also makes no sense? I think they were trying to be self-aware, but there isn't enough self-awareness to excuse it for being shit. There are YouTube animation channels that do a better job than this. Imagine paying money for this. This is embarrassing. But it's a show made for idiots to get them to buy garbage, so this is about the level of quality I would expect. Oh, but it's about to get worse. Because we're about to go ape on some apes. Let's go. If not by name, you'll all know the Bored Ape Yacht Club. When you think of NFTs, your first thought was probably of a bored ape. They're arguably the most prominent and successful example of an NFT project, raking in millions of dollars selling their apathetic primate visages, which have been blasted obnoxiously all over your social media. Because buying a bored ape gives you a license to use it for commercial purposes, they've branched out into other fields, spreading their tendrils like a crypto Cthulhu. There's an online metaverse video game, an Arizona iced tea collab comic, and even a restaurant, which no longer accepts crypto. <laughs> Lol. This place in the spotlight has made them a common target for scammers and hackers, as well as the memeing and derision of the internet. Don't feel too bad for them though, they're really convinced that they're part of the coolest club in town, and need a healthy reminder that no one else gives a shit about their ugly JPEGs. We're not really here to talk about the bored apes though, we're here to talk about the Red Ape Family. A groundbreaking new comedy, and the first animated series built around and starring famous NFTs. That's right, most of the characters are real NFTs that you can actually buy, if you really want. The main ones are bored apes, but there's other NFTs thrown in there as well. It is also the first show of its kind where episodes are sold as individual NFTs. So basically, if you buy one of these super special limited supply of Red Ape Family NFTs, you get access to one of these episodes. And even now, they still sell for hundreds of dollars each. So again, it's gotta be good. Right? And of what? Non-fungible token? Non-fuckable token? All you need to know is that it actually is worth more than the entire city of Paris. Including the Eiffel Tower? Yes, including the Eiffel Tower. Oh no, these things are infamous for a reason. They didn't exactly put their best foot forward in their first episode, released on their YouTube channel in November 2021. You know it's gonna be good when they disable the dislikes. But I have screenshots, motherfucker! Your worst nightmare. The director's credit being in Comic Sans is also a good sign. The characters are all as hideous as you'd expect. The animation is not only terrible, but again, worse than a lot of what you'd find on YouTube. We could go through this frame by frame and break down just how bad it is in minute detail, but it's simply not worth our time. And there is no lip syncing, they're very obviously just switching between JPEGs that they cut up in Photoshop. This is an insult to animation. The editing is incredibly jarring, like they wouldn't know what a smooth transition is if one fucked their mum. My ass. They all but steal the time transition slides from Spongebob and still manage to make them worse. Three days later. Two days later. The dialogue sounds awful, like it was poorly recorded and processed, and no joke, some of it sounds like it was recorded over VR chat. Shoe sizes and body weights, please, my darling. Get them wrong, and you'll float away. 
and die. The main guy sounds like he's deep-throated a lot of cigars and suffered a long bout of constipation. Um, honey, would the husband you idolize and adore let you down? Don't answer that. And then there's this guy doing a really over-the-top stereotypical African accent. Hey, hey, what are you talking about? That is not very nice. I'm not sure what they were going for with this, but it's not funny and probably just going to rub some people the wrong way. Speaking of funny, it's hilarious that they call this a comedy when they clearly have no sense of humour. None of the jokes make any sense, and even if they did make sense, they still wouldn't be funny. There is at least four apes out there, mi amor. We cannot let them all in. But if we do, they can hang around. <laughs> Get it? They're so bad that they're almost anti-jokes. Well, I'll be. There's life on Mars after all. A lot of it is just bad monkey puns or dated reference humor. Hey, Chucky. Hey, Chucky. Man's not hot, Chucky. Yeah, man's not hot, that thing that was mildly funny five years ago. But then they also put Laurel and Hardy in this, because that's totally a thing that Millennials and Zoomers will be down with. The best joke is that they called their ship Musk One in an obvious attempt to get Elon's attention and have him spread the word and make the line go up, when he's made fun of the idea of these NFTs before. They also swear way too much, obviously trying to be cool and edgy. I ain't seen that shit in years. Non-fuckable toucan. Motherfucker. Don't fuck it up. Fucking Taylor. What the fuck, little guy? Oh, for fuck's sake. Fuck! 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 And of course, the writing is total dog shit. And how about the rest of you cheeky monkeys? We're not monkeys. Do you see a fucking tail on my ass? But you described them as monkeys like a minute ago? These young monkeys are Caesar and Hunky. Yeah, the dialogue is awful, and there are so many lines where I have no idea what the fuck they were talking about. Sick. Size 14 and 200 kg, my man, what the No tea. The story and pacing are so confusing. Characters are introduced and we have no idea who they are or what their relationship is to each other. Wait, this is meant to be his wife? Why is she unshaven now? What? The plot centers around a bored ape called Chucky who steals a USB stick containing the most expensive NFT ever made. And can we just acknowledge how funny it is that the first episode of an NFT show is about stealing NFTs? Pursued by androids from the museum, they run away to Mars. And Donald Trump is there, for some reason? They arrive at their new home, their neighbors spot them, and it abruptly ends. I'm skipping over some details, but you're not missing anything at all. So much of it just conveys no information in terms of narrative. You know we are gonna party hard, man. Where the girls them there? Oh, here we are go. Oh, sh hey, what is this, man? Bomba clad, man. Who them? Them here, me yard. Me not know you. Move your bomba clad, man. I see. That was very insightful and profound. Watching this was like undergoing a bad trip. Everything is so ugly and nonsensical and disorienting that at the end, all you can do is ask yourself what the fuck you just experienced. Imagine paying hundreds of dollars for this shit. Apparently they raised over one million dollars just for this episode. Now, I'm not accusing them of anything, but I've also never wanted to see the receipts more badly. But again, it's not about the animation. It's about the hype and cultural impact and making the line go up. Yeah, this is a good start. Yeah, yeah, real good. But it doesn't stop there. One of the advantages of taking so long to make this video is that in that time, they were actually able to release episode two. <laughs> now, admittedly, there have been improvements, particularly in the animation, though it was a very low bar to begin with. They even kind of admit that the first episode was shit. It was fucking awful. We were in a universe where we had no backstory or character arcs, and you had a fucking British accent. Hey, well fuck you too! But at the same time, they also act really salty towards the people that criticized them. People hated it. I saw another universe too, royally fucked by the way, creatures called trolls, who were trapped in a thing called YouTube. Call them trolls all you want, but you still acknowledge that they were right. You're a brilliant scientist, but your accent and character traits fall in line with racist stereotypes. No, they were assholes. Virgins making reaction videos in the mother's basements, all talking about how shitty we are. It's funny that they say that when most NFT bros have the sex appeal of the average Discord mod. And they put some of their YouTuber critics into the show as their way of mocking them, but they don't even do that successfully and just come across as butthurt. Oh no, please don't put me in your show, Mr. Red Ape Family 
person. That would be so awful for me. Despite the improvements, there are still many problems. If Dad needs help, he'll ask me. If he needs fleas off his back, he'll ask you. Animation flaws are still pretty common, the characters still look hideous, and the jokes are still garbage tier. What's with all these cats? Somebody grab the pussy. Would you grab that pussy, please? Why is Trump even here? I don't understand. Oh, and if the board apes weren't ugly enough for you, they introduced these fucking things, who are getting their own spin-off, so... <laughs> that's something to look forward to. The voice acting is also still terrible. Hey, that's my kid, fat fuck! The name's Fat Fucking Ape. And the villain has the most exaggerated Indian accent I've ever heard. Do you have a degree from the University of Phoenix? No. Then shut the fuck up. Bring the NFT to Musqueville or Hanky dies. Was that racist? Is this racist? I don't know, man. This, this feels kind of racist. The story is somewhat more coherent, but still uncompelling. I got nothing to do with NFTs. I make an honest living now. So they're admitting that NFTs aren't an honest living? Basically, everyone's after the golden NFT he stole in the first episode, so the villain has his son kidnapped and they have to go rescue him. You stupid primate bitch! I will leave you to deal with my most dangerous NFT, motherfucker. And then a giant baby Elon Musk shows up, and I'm sure God has never been more disappointed in us. <gasps> Bitcoin, show the Bitcoin. <laughs> and then giant baby Elon gets saved by Bitcoin and then gives him a slime covered mushroom from his underwear that makes him trip balls. I can't believe I just had to write that sentence. What the fuck? The animation in the hallucination scene is actually pretty cool though. I'll give him that. But again, I just left this whole thing feeling very empty inside. I watched them for free and I still feel robbed. Maybe that upcoming film trilogy will be better, yeah? I smell another video on the horizon. Well, I know one thing we don't eat. And what is that, old boy? Percy! While we're still on the subject of Bored Apes, though, there's another little project that's worth mentioning. Comedian Seth Green, who you may know as the creator of Robot Chicken, the voice of Chris Griffin on Family Guy, and also the voice of Joker in Mass Effect, is one of the celebrities who jumped on the NFT bandwagon. And he unveiled a trailer for his upcoming comedy series, White Horse Tavern, at the NFT convention, VCon. And it just so happens to be, you guessed it, awful. The idea is that it's kind of like a Roger Rabbit style universe where humans and NFTs coexist and interact with one another. But this is just embarrassing. It doesn't look like there's any story here and the jokes are monumentally unfunny. Want me to rough them up? I am the only gay guy in my ballet class who can make a fist. It's the kind of thing you could only like if you're already deeply invested in NFTs. In which case, I'm sure it'll make you piss your pants in glee. Remember all those scams we talked about earlier? Well, Sethy Boy also fell victim to a phishing scam and had the NFT star of the show stolen and sold to another user. Because of the way these Bored Ape NFTs work, if you own them, you own the commercial usage rights to them. And despite Seth's protest that he had not lost any rights because the art had been stolen, he still ended up paying some random guy called Darkwing84 around $300,000 just to be able to continue making his dog shit NFT show. Which is fucking hilarious, and makes a mockery of the notion that NFTs somehow protect creators. Although this event did raise interesting questions about NFTs and intellectual property rights, which I'm sure will get resolved through various lawsuits. And while I was making this video, actor and comedian Kevin Hart dropped what I think might be the ugliest NFTs I've yet seen. Did Kevin just turn into a 3D character? Well, yes he did! Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? Yeah, yeah, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, okay, whatever. But just look at these! Look at how shit and low effort they are! They wanted to raise $600,000 from these! Own one of Kevin's 10,000 Alter Ego NFTs to unlock a lifelong supply of laughs. <laughs> Somehow, I think we'll be the ones laughing. They boast about the utility they provide, like access to an exclusive community, events, merch, and so on. But again, all this could have been done without NFTs. And if you are going to insist on doing it with NFTs, at least make them look better than a Funko Pop Rejects reel. 
Alongside these NFTs, he also released an animation called Confessions from the Heart on Roku TV. It's basically a computer animated anthology based on his Instagram TV series of the same name, in which he recounts some riveting life stories. This is a story from when I was in Scandinavia, and I got food poisoning, and I ended up, I ended up shitting on myself on stage. Great, well, I'm off to go kill myself. I don't know how this is possible, but somehow this animation is of even lower quality than the NFTs. Children's animated shows from three decades ago, like Reboot or Donkey Kong Country, look better than this. I don't care how interesting his stories are, I couldn't stand to watch them if they're being presented like this. I would be ashamed to put my name on this. But if his name weren't attached to this, no one would give a shit. This is the quality content you're buying into? How can you look at this, and these, and not think that you're being mugged off? I refuse to watch the whole thing because I'm not giving this crap any more of my time and attention. This trailer tells me everything I need to know. The worst of all these animations though has to be Cryptoland. Technically this isn't an NFT cartoon, but it does involve NFTs, and it's just too awful not to talk about in a video like this, because fuck Cryptoland. You may have already heard of this one, because it went viral at the start of this year for being shit. Cryptoland is a project that claims to want to buy an island in Fiji and turn it into a paradise for cryptocurrency enthusiasts. And I cannot imagine anything less appealing. Except perhaps a Reddit mod meetup. Speaking of which, when one of the founders was asked what the age of consent would be on the island, he responded, mental maturity should be more than enough. Well, that's horrifying. He then tried to say that it was due to a misinterpretation of the language by a non-native English speaker. Yeah, okay, sure. In fact, Cryptoland reminds me of Reddit Island in terms of how delusional and most likely an outright scam the project was. Imagine Rapture from Bioshock if it were designed by Mr. Bean. It's like a little Disneyland for crypto lovers like us. See, they were selling NFTs, which entitled the owner to a one-acre plot of land on the island, along with the opportunity to develop the land and infrastructure, with the NFTs going for over $1 million each. What's amazing about, about this whole project, Crypto Land, I'm actually buying an ultra rare one of one in a collection of 10,000 NFTs. And that's dope, right? But like that ties to this actual piece of land. So I'm actually buying my first piece of land. Except there was one slight problem. They didn't own the island or even have the money to buy it. There was no existing infrastructure on the island and the amount that they would need to actually build everything they wanted to build would run way higher than their estimate you were effectively buying theoretical land. You would legitimately have been better off buying virtual land in a video game like Second Life. At least that would have had some real value. They also promised that they were going to buy the island using other sources of funding, not the money from the NFTs. But when those other sources of funding didn't materialize, they changed their terms and said that the money from the NFT sales would be used to buy the island, which pissed off what few backers they already had. Whether this was a case of gross incompetence or a rug pull scam, I'll leave for you to decide. I trust you. Don't trust, verify! It's also another example of crypto and NFT bros making up a problem and then offering an unnecessary and expensive solution to that made up problem. We believe in the necessity of having a place where the community can join together. And so the question then becomes, what are the best places to go? Rent an office. The creators also responded very badly to criticism, allegedly sending Molly White, a writer who documented and criticised Cryptoland and was responsible for it going viral in the first place, a cease and desist letter. There's a whole lot more to this story and I can't possibly talk about it all. Kira TV has a whole bunch of videos talking about it, so go check them out for more info. Cryptoland has been called the Fire Festival of Crypto, but at least Fire Festival actually put on a festival? As shitty as it was? Whereas Cryptoland is just never going to happen. As funny as it would be if a bunch of crypto bros went full on Lord of the Flies, the project seems to be dead in the water. Now, we can finally say that Cryptoland exists. Uh, no? It exists in digital form, but it exists nonetheless. Oh, there it is!
but it's left its mark on the online landscape in the form of its presentation video, which is truly a sight to behold. I highly recommend you go watch this. Look at the quality of this 3D animation. I don't wanna leave. This is like a parody of itself. They cannot have been serious with this. But yes indeed, dear viewer, they were. Let's make things interesting, shall we? I'm gonna take a shot every time he says crypto. Hi, this is me, Christopher, a crypto degen with a crush for crypto kitties. I'm on my way to crypto land, the number one crypto destination on earth where crypto enthusiasts, or crypto landers like we're called here, can meet with like-minded individuals in real life. <laughs> That's we how I became stop. King Crypto Lander. <laughs> Great, and now I fucking dribbled on myself. I'm gonna be like this for the rest of the video. It's simultaneously a piece of promotional propaganda and circle jerk theater. I'm still amazed by the success of the Crypto Landers NFT collection. What a great idea. It's the visionary community of Crypto Landers that supported it. Those are the real OGs. So basically, this guy, who looks like the dad in a bootleg DreamWorks movie, gets shown around Crypto Land by this fucking abomination, who tries way too hard to emulate Robin Williams. Oh, you invest, study the best. And what do we say when investors make the test? Let's make a deep dive so we can survive. You don't want to end like my Mount Gox friend. This reminds me of Food Fight in all the worst ways. The animation, voice acting, and writing are all horrendous, even by the standards of these NFT cartoons. The community's loving it, like on Twitter. Can't wait for you to give me a tour, Connie. What? The audio mixing is ass, and some of it sounds like it was recorded using a phone in a public toilet. So, are you coming to the Vladimir Club party tonight? Yeah, just for crypto Lander NFT holders, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> Classic. Thanks. Enjoy your meal. See you around. Actually, I was thinking about taking a crypto kitty. Would you mind sharing? I would love to. The character's eyes just stop moving or blinking after a while, and it's really creepy. And even if it weren't so ugly and janky, it would still be vomit-inducing. <laughs> this is like the Disneyland of cryptos! Oh god, that's so lame. That's so lame! It's like it was generated by an AI that got fed a bunch of crypto-related keywords. To the moon! To the room! To the room, not the moon! The jokes are all either crypto community in-jokes, or references to decades-old memes that have themselves become crypto in-jokes. Your keys, your Bitcoin. Not your keys, not your Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, it's been a while! <laughs> yeah, 50,000 blocks at least! <laughs> been waiting for you since consensus. What are you, a pending transaction or what? Honey Badger don't care! <laughs> we are gonna make it! They throw in a bunch of other dated references as well, like Crazy Frog and the Macarena, which is 30 years old at this point. They even released a series of videos explaining all the jokes and references after the fact, as if anyone would give a fuck. They also make fun of another crypto scheme for being a scam when they themselves are highly dubious. Me think the lady doth protest too much. It's also really funny that they do this, considering this animation is full of assets that were either outright stolen, or taken from sites that were only intended to be used for non-commercial purposes, altered and used without paying or crediting the artist. They also stole music from Mario, which I'm sure Nintendo would love to hear about. <laughs> At least they have gender-neutral bathrooms, I guess. There's only so much I can say about this atrocity before my brain goes completely numb. Watch it yourself if you want more, but I feel like what I've shown speaks for itself. It's like it was made by people who've never interacted with another human being. This grotesque nightmare would not convince me to buy crypto. You have to be so, so deeply invested in the crypto mindset to get through this without developing an opioid addiction. Oh, and crypto is really not gonna get you laid, bro. Start a YouTube channel instead. That gets all the pussy moist. Not that I would know. These are far from the only NFT animations, and there'll certainly be more. But as long as these animations are more interested in jerking off their culty investors than they are in making something good, I have no faith that we'll see any improvements as far as they're concerned. We've only barely scratched the surface of the maelstrom of tomfuckery and cringe that is the NFT sphere. I do, however, derive some satisfaction from seeing the bubble burst, as over the last few months, the NFT market has experienced a decline as dramatic and hilarious as that of Boris Johnson, with NFT sales collapsing to only a small fraction of what they were at their peak. 
a crash that coincided with a downturn in the cryptocurrency market as a whole. And I'm sorry, but if you're going to go around calling your NFT of the first ever tweet the Mona Lisa of NFTs and try to sell it for the price of a small island, I'm not going to feel bad for you when it goes tits up. Despite this, like Chlamydia, I don't think NFTs are going to go away anytime soon. For better or worse, these things are going to try to squeeze their way into many more aspects of our lives. Perhaps the many issues with NFTs can be mitigated or solved over time as they receive more attention from mainstream institutions and the law. And perhaps this technology will one day reach the point where it can be of genuine benefit to mankind as a whole, instead of just the already rich and powerful and a lucky few. As of now, we're nowhere near that point and scepticism is more than justified. But NFTs will continue to be pushed with all the misguided confidence of whatever Sony executives decided to re-release Morbius because of all the ironic memes, causing it to flop again. Maybe third time's the charm? But I suppose if this YouTube gig doesn't work out, I can always release my own line of Stone CJ NFTs to fund my plastic crack addiction. This pick goes hard, feel free to screenshot. And remember, it is always morally correct to right-click save. And nothing of value was lost. Okay, once we start joking about Blue Waffle, I think the serious hat can come off. <laughs> that, that, didn't, that didn't really work out that way. <laughs> While I have you here, go check out Cine Animations, who put together this awesome channel intro for me. Nice job, man. Link to his channels in the description. Also, I have a second channel now, and a PO box, so you can send me stuff. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, I'm going to just run this one a few different ways, and hopefully I, I, I get you what you need here. Overly excited, bit horny, very cringe. Gotcha. All right. <clears throat> this NFT going to get me pussy. 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 Is NFT going to get me pussy? <laughs> Do any of those work?